Hey everyone, welcome to Birth Audio Cast Series. I'm Ash. I'm thrilled to present today's episode. I had the privilege of interviewing a modern medicine man who is facilitating ayahuasca for those expanding both their soul journey and their healthcare journey. We dive into the indigenous practice and even how ayahuasca can help contribute to the greater environmental conversations in the West. So without any further ado, take a listen. I began to go down this path of self-discovery and kind of learning about myself and patterns that show up in my life and how I react in certain situations and how childhood experiences or different experiences that I've had determine how I'm going to react and how I'm going to act in the world and really sort of dissolving and looking at how I can work with those things and, and, and grow as a person. And uh, through, through that path, I began doing a lot of things in the community. So I, I started a number of community projects, community gardens, uh, a whole section of government just to actually advise on local food and how to, um, I guess, connect the rural areas and the urban areas and create community gardens and neighborhoods and, and trying to really move in that direction. And what I found was that the people that were attracted to these, these community gardens and things that I would create were often people that were already interested in it. And they were already interested in growing. They were already interested in gardening. And it was great that I was creating the, 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 the place for someone to come do this, but I wasn't reaching the people on a, on a level um, and creating that conscious shift that made people naturally want to take care care for the earth or grow locally or, or eat organically. Like I wasn't, I wasn't reaching people on that like unconscious level to make that conscious and make people more aware of that. And my work with ayahuasca, I began working with ayahuasca and drinking it on a very consistent, regular basis. And the more that I worked with this medicine, the more that my own awareness about myself and my behaviors and things that, that were, were, I became more conscious of life, how I hold myself, how I stand, how I walk, how I talk, uh, what I share. And in that process, I realized that being able to provide this medicine to people creates that conscious shift that I was looking to make when creating these community gardens. I was looking to reach people and I, everybody is in a different place. Like as a therapist, it's hard to say, hey, you need this and if I say this, all of a sudden you're gonna, you know, you're gonna find this thing and be this new way. Where ayahuasca meets you exactly where you're at and 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 like a, like a not wise grandmother assists you and helping you learn about yourself and grow as a person and, and naturally the result tends to be care for the earth, connected to nature wanting to maybe garden or grow your own food and be connected to the dirt and uh, so that that's originally what drew me as far as like being able to share this medicine with others. So let's talk a little bit about the medicine itself and um, you know tell me give me just a little bit of what typically what is in the um, what is in the tea. Um, I understand that it's typically two plants that are um, that are married together, and that this is mm -hmm. is typically indigenous to South America. Um, now there are definitely places in in um, that it's often brought to Asia and even in the West, where you know people can seek this out because there are people like you who have, have taken it upon themselves to to serve. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the plant itself and your knowledge of um, you know if its origins and how it's applied. Um, by by ancient ancestors and and indigenous people. Sure. Yeah, I love this stuff. So so ayahuasca has been used for thousands of years. Um, it's tough to know how long, but it's been at least two thousand years of evidence where they've been able to scrape from like you know people and find uh, brews of ayahuasca in jars and things. And what ayahuasca is is it's a vine from the Amazon jungle, and it's mixed with another plant. So ayahuasca is what's called an MAOI. Um, what it does is it allows our body to access DMT. Uh, DMT is something that's in all living things. Uh, every, when you're born and when you die, your body is flooded with DMT. And it's an interesting molecule. And uh, normally we can't access it. Our body d digests it and consumes it so quickly that we don't have any kind of spiritual experience in normal waking life or we have a hard time just getting around, you know, eating every time we eat some broccoli or eat some food, we would all of a sudden go into this experience. So what the vine does is it actually allows you to have access to DMT. So ayahuasca, the vine, is mixed with a plant called chacruna, typically, traditionally, and that has a DMT source. So you combine these two things together, they brew it over a period of days, uh, depending on the culture even. So like in Peru, they'll brew it for eight days, and it tends to be burnt. They burn it a little bit, and it has this really dark, like bitter, bitter taste. 
uh, in Hawaii, the guy brews for four hours through brews for the UDV church. It really only takes four hours to fully extract the medicine and without burning it or having any of that like nasty bitter taste. Uh, Brazil, they brew it in three days with the, with the UDV church there. So every culture, there's, there's over 75 indigenous tribes in the Amazon, all coming from the Amazon that use this as a sacrament. Uh, sometimes it's called Yahe, sometimes it's ayahuasca, like there's different names for it as well. Uh, but they almost always are those two plants. Now there is sometimes, because ayahuasca is almost turned into like a tourism thing in, in South America, you do have to be careful of where you get your ayahuasca as well. So there is a plant called Datura or To, and it's sometimes mixed with ayahuasca to make the experience stronger. Now it's also a very dangerous plant as well, you can't overdose on that where ayahuasca is completely safe. Um, how does it work, you know, uh, to help assist an addict with uh, their, you know, trying to overcome? I know that there's lots of stories of veterans who have gone and done ayahuasca, who have had a significant change where, you know, their addictions were depleted afterwards or gone. Um, you know, how, how does this affect, you know, the body to be able to overcome some of those greater challenges? Sure, sure. Yeah. So there's there's actually quite a bit of science now going into this and really exploring this. And it's it's really awesome. So if you think about like the patterns and things that we do in life are repetitive, like even driving a car, you picture it almost like an ice road where you get these tire tracks that are in the ice road and it's hard to even get off that track. This track you're riding it. With ayahuasca, it actually allows you to create a new path in the snow or a new new direction. So scientifically, they actually connect new wires and things in the brain. So if you think of it like this, like if you were a child and you got bit in the face by a dog, every time you see a child, you might have an automatic response of like, oh my God, dog, bat, don't, don't get through that. You have this fear of reaction that happens every time you see it. Then you go drink ayahuasca, and then as, a, as an adult, you're now able to revisit this experience that you had as a child that was traumatizing. And so there's something called the default default mode network this is a pathway in our brain that pretty much where the ego resides and where our automatic things that we do uh, children don't develop this until their teenage years and then it's not fully developed until they're an adult so if we actually look at a child their actually brain lights up exactly the same as someone who's on ayahuasca the same brain patterns the default mode network isn't developed and so what ayahuasca does is it shuts down these like adult patterns that we've learned to survive in the world and how we got to get around in the world and it shuts down that area of the brain and allows you to redevelop new new ways and strategies in order to survive in the world and see maybe some of these fears that we had as a child can now see with these adult eyes and see okay this is no longer appropriate for me to have this fear or this is holding me back and and choosing something different I also touched on the integration point as far as like once you learn this and once you cr find this new pattern or you create this new pattern in your brain, you must exercise it. If you don't exercise it, that old pathway will just take over again. You'll just go back to doing things the way you were before. So it's, it's very important to now we create this new pathway in our brain. Now we need to exercise it, exercise it, exercise it so that it becomes the new habit or the new pattern that we want to have in our brain. We, we're able to create our life versus being a victim to these circumstances or situations that we were in when we were younger. Which is really important to note, I think, because, you know, there are people that I have heard and seen that go into ayahuasca, but there, there, there must be the realization of sort of doing the work afterwards, you know, continuing the practice. Once you sort of have created the understanding, you have to step into continuing to practice what it gave you um, with sort of open hands and a sense of tenderness for yourself because you have to, it's, it's, it's creating a new, a new way of thinking. It's creating a new way of, of allowing your body to function in a, in a particular way. It's also created, a, you know, a bit of a cleanse. My curiosity too is as a natural medicine, it is a natural earth medicine. Um, you know, how something like this can benefit, you know, in our society and in our conversation um, around things like healthcare and around things like, um, you know, being able to sort of get back in touch with the earth as it concerns our, our health. Um, can you talk a little bit to that? One thing I want to be clear on before I go here is I'm going to share some of my personal belief. And when I facilitate ceremony, I don't share any of my personal belief. It's shows in studies that people are highly suggestible under, under ayahuasca. And it's important to me for people to find their truth on their own and what that truth is. 
versus me putting that in the space and then them becoming that becoming their truth just by proxy from being around me and my influence. Now, from my perspective, a lot of illness and injury is is tied to our emotional state and things that are are things that we're holding on to. So you have issues in your shoulders. Maybe you're holding the weight of the the world on your shoulders and you're bottling up and carrying all of these things. Uh, maybe it's the you know your your feet. They're they're trying to hold you up, or you're trying to you know carry everybody or drag people along. Like there's there's so many different things that can show up, or poisons in our body, cancers in our body, like all being things that we stem from some type of emotional thing. And when we're able to uncover these things and work on these things, our our body tends to feel better and start to get better, really without not anything else. But I feel like what's the most astounding thing with ayahuasca is she teaches you how to care for yourself. It's not that ayahuasca necessarily always heals you as much as teaches you how to heal yourself. Um, for example, uh, my wife uh, was dealing with asthma. So asthma was something that she was struggling with her whole life. And ayahuasca had her start looking at that. Like, what is this? What can I do to, to heal this? What's wrong? And it showed her things to be responsible for in her life to kind of clean up. You know, from an energetic standpoint, when the indigenous people are asked how they found ayahuasca, they say the plants told them. Ayahuasca, these two plants grow in different places of the jungle. So, like, this, everything that we need is inside, and the things outside will help us as well, but the inside is, like, where everything's at, to be able to go inside and, and figure out what you need as an individual. It's it's almost like its own little doctor, a little healer you're able to take. When I, And ayahuasca helps us access those things. And then the things outside are just... They're all connected. Like it's, it's anything I see outside is just a reflection back of what's inside, uh, and it's so conceptual or it sounds very cliche in some way. But when you experience ayahuasca at its deepest, it's it's unbelievable how connected everything is and how connected we are to everything, and we've we've almost lost that as a species. We've divided and separated ourselves from nature as if we are in charge of it or on top of it. You go spend the night in the Amazon jungle and, and come back and tell me if you still feel like you're king of the kingdom. I definitely think that uh, our world, we, we've, we've done ourselves a disservice by, by asserting control of the narrative through dominion rather than participation. Um, this is a bit of a theme with me and that if you know our dominion over the earth has stopped us from really valuing what the earth can offer us. Um, to help expand ourselves and so as a result, you know in order to control it we you know we This is why climate change is exists and this is why you know these things um, Are are becoming such major issues. How do we weave things like ayahuasca and plant medicines in general? I mean even cannabis is a plant medicine essentially and so how do we weave? Um, this into the healthcare conversation uh, presently, you know, as it is, uh, you know, I actually did appreciate Miriam Williamson's commentary on the fact that we have sick care. Uh, we take care of symptoms and sickness, uh, but we're not necessarily getting to the roots to expand um, what is actually going on with us. And that doesn't necessarily negate modern medicine. Modern medicine can be a really beautiful thing, but at the same time, um, the pharmaceutical companies often control and create further addiction. So how do we how do we weave plant medicines in? into the greater context. Yeah, I think a lot of it's education. I mean, it's all, everything always comes back to education, I think. So there's actually, um, there's an organization called MAPS, uh, multiple I dis I, I, I lost it, but it's uh, maps.org and they're studying uh, psilocybin, ayahuasca, as well as MDMA. And they actually have government approval to do these different trials. And they're going into trials and actually doing the study and doing the, the, the work to actually get the scientific research uh, available. Like it has, it's not even available. So it, all the research stopped back in the 70s and everything was cut off. And it's, it's sad to see it happen. I think that government sometimes fears people being more awake and responsive. Like people are easier to control and manage when they're drinking fluoride and junk food and just kind of going about life and going to their 40 hour work week and they, they, they lose track of what life is and what life can be. And I think ayahuasca and, and even LSD and psilocybin, these things access a different area of consciousness and allows us to see how things could be versus this uh, society way that it's been handed to us on a platter. This is, this is how you must act. This is what you must do. This is where you go. This is how you go to school. This is 
this is the game plan of life and this is what you're going to do work until you die and i think it's education and i think it's happening thank you so much for sharing your experience here i really appreciate it um and um you know i really hope that there will, there will be some people that it'll it'll speak to um that will encourage them to explore whether it's ayahuasca or whether it's you know further into their own spirit practice or other earth medicines for which they've had some curiosity um you know i think that it's valuable to be able to have these conversations so thank you for your time absolutely thanks thanks for doing this thanks for getting the word out i hope this conversation encouraged you i hope you found something in it for you if not plant medicines perhaps expanding your spiritual or your soul practice as you continue to create a world of healing and community around you and maybe some of these things are are ways for you to enter into a conversation in your communities about the healthcare system where you live if you're somebody who is interested in looking further into ayahuasca and into that journey feel free to contact me and i will give you some resources and if not i'm still interested in hearing your thoughts about this conversation so please leave them in the comment section below and take them to the coffee shop or into your home um or among your friends and let them know because this should be a community effort i hope you have an incredibly blessed week may you live